Hello, I'm Kydeck. This video serves as the kind of landing page slash tutorial for using this new rig that I created and template for basically making your own custom face rig avatar. So, yep. This avatar is created in the Among Us style with the hopes of kind of helping out streamers and anybody who wants to enjoy some fun face rig type content. Uh, in that style and as a kind of introductory way for anyone to create their own avatar uh, using this template. This template should allow for anyone with any kind of simple artistic abilities or any access to a simple drawing program to edit a single texture file and hopefully get their own functioning avatar similar to the one I'm using right now. While this rig style does cater to the Among Us format, you can use it to create any kind of basic face rig avatar that kind of fills the same general format. This rig is also a little bit of an experiment in just trying to make a face rig that the user could actually edit entirely themselves with the rigging and all that stuff already being done. So there's some interesting stuff in there. Anyway, if you happen to just be here for the download link, it should be somewhere in the description. Other than that, we'll move on to a basic tutorial. To start off for the installation of any live 2D rig into FaceRig, you're obviously going to need the program itself, and then you're going to need the live 2D plugin that will allow for inside your Steam folder. So on my computer, it will be the PC E program files x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, face rig, mod, VP, PC common. Inside this folder, if you have the Live 2D plugin, you will have an objects folder. If it's not there, then the Live 2D plugin is not uh, added yet. So you're going to go in there, and then you're going to receive a from me from the download you're going to get a zip file there's going to be a single folder inside that and that's where you're going to find this among us folder you're just going to drag and drop that into the objects folder inside that objects folder it's going to be pretty straightforward all of this you can basically ignore and the only folder you're going to care about is this among us 4096 this is the texture folder, and this is the one thing that you edit yourself. Uh, in my case, I already have my edited, created texture, but for anyone else, you're going to receive this image, and I'm going to include this image and an automatic backup, just in case anybody forgets. We have this. So you're going to have this image. Um, it's a pretty straightforward. There's some simple instructions, a little bit of a credit in the bottom. Um, and all you're going to have to do is open this up in any kind of image editing program and uh, over draw over or erase or whatever to redo all of these pieces as your own character. And I'll get into that a little bit more uh, in a minute. So you're going to have this image and you're going to have a backup, which is going to be the exact same one. The main important thing is whichever texture you're going to be using is going to be this texture underscore zero zero. And this is a PNG file. Um, that is the image format that FaceRig recognizes. Um, and once you've finished your editing, you will have a texture similar to this. Uh, this is for my own character. Obviously, there will hopefully still be a little credit thing in the bottom. Uh, I did this before uh, adding the text portion of the texture. Anyway, so you're going to have all these pieces. You're going to have a body, you're going to have arms, ears, a little hair tuft for me, uh, kind of a nose visor, some stuff. Uh, one thing that I didn't display yet is there is an imposter variant. Uh, there would be an imposter visible section right down here, but I didn't add one to the body of my character. But I do have this little grilling red section for my own uh, in the imposter mode. A few other little traits to note would be this little like nose and whiskers that is in the logo section that sits on your stomach as you probably saw at the beginning of this video the avatar fully finished out. 
Um, with the backpack, there's no point in putting anything right here in the middle because uh, nothing will be visible. It's basically just the edges as your body turns. Um, there is a little bit of play with how exactly the ears are structured. If you look at the texture itself, um, the basically the corner points, if you were to put a square box around it, that is the area you have to work with. And that's the same with the tail. There's going to be a little extra line on the top and the bottom, and that kind of helps to find a full box area for you to draw in. So with that, once you've finished up your editing, you're going to save it as a .png. Um, obviously it doesn't show up right here, but make sure it's a PNG file. Texture underscore zero zero. And inside this folder, whichever image has that name will be the one that's used in face rig. If you ever make adjustments to this folder, if you want it to show up in face rig, you have to restart face rig entirely. Moving on a little bit more, we're going to move into editing the texture a little bit. So for me, I'm going to da, 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 open this up with Photoshop. And I also have myself a handy note that I need to add if I can remember to. One thing that I'm going to hopefully add in a future video is uh, kind of a breakdown, the logic and thoughts that go behind, go into uh, the creating of this, because with the interest of making it for other people to create their own characters, I needed to lay out this in an easy to understand format. And one of those things was actually finding good symmetry lines for people to actually draw their characters on. Uh, if I was creating this rig myself, I would actually do all of the art up front. It wouldn't really have to be in any format or anything. It'd just be all stacked up, just kind of how it's supposed to be normally, almost as if it was just a drawing. But because it's already formatted and you're just editing the texture, there's a little bit more that goes into it. And things like making symmetry lines add up uh, is a significant part of that. So just in case I forget to add the text file to the folder, uh, one thing that's going to make the, your life a hell of a lot easier when messing with this is to know these points of symmetry uh, for this. I have a simple text document. The near edge being the body armor and imposter armor is at the 440 pixel uh, line. The middle will be at 2048 and the far edge being the hat horn visor, talking visor, so on and so forth at 3702. Uh, the tail is not on that symmetry line. The tail is a non-symmetrical item and swings on its own. Uh, apart from symmetry. So as just a quick example, if I was to want to edit the body, now that I'm recording on my regular monitor and not my tablet, this is going to be very silly. But just as an example, if you were in Photoshop and you want to use symmetry, you go to your brush tool, you'd go to symmetry, vertical symmetry, and you're gonna it's going to show up here, but up here at the top, you're going to see the X coordinate. And that's the number that we're going to be manipulating. So if I want to be on the body armor and imposter armor, uh, we're going to put in 440 right there. And that drops the symmetry line right there. Oh my, doing this on with a mouse does not make any sense. Okay. So you have your symmetry lines. There's a few ways. I'm, ultimately, you can edit this in any way you like. But some suggestions would be kind of a variation between editing the layer that it comes on and adding to it. Like, for instance, if you want your body to have these outlines that I've already got, obviously you're going to keep that there. But you probably don't want the text body in the middle of your character. So you can select that and just delete that away. Um, and then in the brush, now maybe you don't want to accidentally overwrite the body that's already there. So you create another layer 
drop it below so now you can actually do this and have your own fills and now you have uh, a symmetrical way to create your own character. Same thing goes for when you move on to... What the hell is the shortcuts for Zoom? Ah! So anyway, you can turn off symmetry and then you can move on to the... Once you've filled out the one section, you can move on to like the ears. And you'll go, oh, let's do another symmetry. Already defaults to 2048 and you just hit OK. And voila, you have another layer to texture. Now, just as a reference, as I already stated, the rough outlines of the things are where they're going to be in the program. So that's why you can see the slight outline to the armor is you can basically draw all the way out to that outline and it'll show up in face rig. Same with the imposter armor, but like for the body, it doesn't have that box. So you really do want to keep it within that frame of that body itself. With the ears, you have basically that spot to work with per ear. Um, there's a tiny bit of leeway on either side. So if you want to make like tall ears, that's totally fine. Or if you want to make ears that stick out to the side, that's pretty much fine. Uh, this point on the ears is the point of pivot. There is some slight physics associated with it uh, so that the ears bounce and stuff. That is the point where they pivot on. With the hat and horn, it's a little bit questionable on how functional it really is. But in the example that I have, I put my hair there. Um, it moves with the rest of the body, but if you want any kind of hard turning effects, it's not going to work very well. Um, just because with the visor following the eyes, the body follows the head. Uh, trying to get it all to line up, it would be more complicated than a simple uh, format like this would allow. Uh, the visor is what you'll see all the time. The talking visor is kind of to, whenever your mouth is open, you'll see an additional effect or something like like if you want it to glow or you know basically anything when your mouth is open that layer will show up uh, the imposter visor and the imposter armor both within face rig when you hit c on your keyboard it'll toggle those layers on and off just as an added expression or i have it set up kind of suggesting the idea of oh when you're playing the imposter in among us uh, you can toggle that to let your viewers know that you are the imposter and you could play the bad guy or something like that. It's just an alternate skin. They both sit on top of everything else. With the logo, uh, that's somewhat of a secondary thing. I'm not sure how effective it really is, but it's an additional sign that basically st sits on the stomach and is on top of everything else. So if you have like a specific character logo or just something that you want to always be shown, you can put it there. It's kind of like having a t-shirt. And then lastly, as I've already explained, the backpack, only the edges of the backpack will actually be shown. And the tail, here's that line I was talking about. You really, when you're making your tail, so in case you're like a husky or something like that, you have a decent space to actually put like a full curl or something in there. Um, if you just want that kind of tail. Unfortunately, if you have a very, very long tail, that's not going to work. Uh, you basically have this box to work in. I think that's about all I had to say. I hope you enjoy. Um, if you have any feedback at all, I would much appreciate it. I have no idea how this is going to work out. This is my first time attempting this kind of thing, and I haven't really seen anyone else do it before. I'd like to progress on this concept of creating uh, universal face rigs for anyone to use without having to, you know, get one custom commission for the rigging and everything. So let me know in the comments or wherever you see me. My socials are all kinds of down below. Up, up there. There we go. I am Fluffy Kydek on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and here on YouTube. Anyway, thanks for watching.